We just got off the Sun Princess, Princess Cruise's newest and largest cruise ship. And this is the good, bad, and ugly. everybody, what's up? My name is Jordan. And I'm Jared. And this is JJ, JJ Cruise. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today for our full review of Princess Cruise's brand new cruise ship, the Sun Princess. Today, we're going to tell you all about the food, the activities, our personal experience on board this amazing ship, as well as we're going to tell you some things to know and the ugly of our particular trip. This is our full, honest cruise review. And by the end of the video, you're going to know if the Sun Princess is truly right for you. But before we get into any of it, please subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to 75,000 subscribers and you can be a part of the first 75K JJ crew. And while you're at it, why don't you hit that thumbs up? We spent five glorious nights aboard the Sun Princess, and we did it with someone that you might recognize. We were there with Don from Don's Family Vacations. We had an incredible time on board the ship, hanging out with Don. If you don't subscribe to his channel, go over and check Don's Family Vacations out, but we just had a great time with him on board. We can't wait to cruise with Don another time because cruising with Don is so, so special. As we stated, the Sun Princess is Princess Cruz's brand new ship. And we sailed aboard this ship out of Barcelona, Spain, over to Athens, Greece, stopping at several places in the Mediterranean. But for this particular trip, the destinations or locations were not the focus. We were fully focused on getting on board and trying the entire Sun Princess experience. Not only is this a brand new cruise ship, but it's a brand new cruise ship class. This is a part of the Sphere class, and you'll know why when looking at the Sun Princess. She is so much more than just a traditional cruise ship because she has spheres all over her body. And when we say spheres, there's everything from the dome, which we'll talk about later in this video, as well as some portions on the side that jet out and form almost like a sphere-like structure. Let's jump right in and get into the good. And when we talk about the good, we definitely want to talk about our stateroom. Now, for this cruise, we were in a deluxe balcony stateroom. We do have a full review of this room that you can go and check out if you're interested in seeing what this room looks like. But there were two parts of the room that we thought were great. That was the overall storage as well as the comfy beds. Now for the storage, the storage was endless. Whether it is the actual closet space, the drawers, the shelving, the hooks, whatever it is that you may need in your cabin, you have for storage space, which makes those longer journeys that much better. And when it comes to the bed, this was one of the most comfortable beds we have ever slept in on a cruise ship. We definitely got good night's sleep every single night that we were in this room because the bed was soft, comfortable, and felt like we were just sleeping on a cloud. Though we stayed in a deluxe balcony, there's another stateroom type that we had to add to the good list, and that is the Cabana Mini Suites. This is a brand new stateroom for Princess Cruises, and it is a traditional mini suite with an additional add-on, a small additional room with a cabana. The room has an extra TV, additional seating place, and all cabana suite rooms have access to the private reserved cabana deck. What I love is the fact that you can choose which type you like. If you're more social, you can actually stay on the actual deck where the reserved area of the hot tub and the day beds are. Or if you're someone that wants to be a little bit more private and just go to the reserve section when you want, you can get the more traditional balcony feel. When it comes to the overall ship design, we really like the fact that there are a lot of the traditional princess venues, but with a little bit of a unique or modern touch, as well as additional new venues that has never been seen on Princess Cruises cruise ships in the past. One of the venues that we really saw evolve on the Sun Princess is the Piazza. The Piazza is kind of the center of the ship, and this Piazza is three stories high with a screen that is used for activities and entertainment, and they've added seating actually all the way around on every level so that this can really be the heart or the center place of the ship. You also still have fan favorites like Princess Live or some of those eateries like Alfredo's or pubs like O'Malley's on board. 
They are just a little bit different in design to be a little bit more modern, a little bit more all-encompassing, and really give an extra sparkle to some of these spaces. Both the diversity and amount of venues on board make the Sun Princess a destination in and of itself to explore. Even though the Sun Princess is a destination in herself, you also are able to really remind yourself you are at sea or you are at a beautiful island destination. Wherever you may be, you can see because there is more glass on this ship than we have ever seen Princess Cruises have before. The views from pretty much every deck are absolutely stunning. From floor to ceiling, glass windows from the piazza all the way up to the top or upper decks really give you a good sense of peace and tranquility and relaxation for wherever you may be. When it comes to views, you can't forget the dome either. The dome is a giant glass enclosed structure that sits at the very front of the ship, allowing you to see where the ship is going and where your next destination is going to be. Inside that dome is one of many pools on board the Sun Princess. We have found that these pools are diverse, they're well situated and really give you different vibes depending on what you're looking for. You have the main pool deck, which has more of the traditional pool deck vibe, whether there's a live music out there or movies under the stars. You can have that main pool deck experience, but if you want something a little more tranquil, you can go all the way to the aft of the ship with the Wakeview Terrace. That pool is serene, has an infinity pool, overlooks the wake of the ship, which is the back views as you're sailing away. Absolutely stunning views with two hot tubs situated beside the pool as well. And the hot tubs just don't end there. There are hot tubs throughout the ship. We actually counted and we think that there are possibly more hot tubs on this ship than there may be on any other cruise ship currently sailing the high seas. There were hot tubs scattered throughout the ship and they were numerous. We think this is absolutely extraordinary for a premium cruise line, especially. As we have seen a lot of other premium cruise lines not have as many hot tubs per capita as what is found on Sun Princess. Another one of the pool decks is the Sanctuary. Now this is a private area that you can buy day passes to, or if you're in a signature suite, you have access to. But this deck is beautiful. The pool is gorgeous. The hot tubs up there are really nice. And this is definitely a place that we could see ourselves purchasing passes to and enjoying daily if we ever go back to the Sun Princess. One thing I loved about the Sun Princess was the fact that there is eateries right on the pool deck, but it wasn't the buffet. I love this because I hate when there are just wet people, wet bathing suits, wet bodies all across the buffet or the eatery on Sun Princess. And with the eatery being on deck nine and the pools being on a higher deck, it really makes it to where you don't have that issue anymore. A choice that Princess has made in the eatery or their buffet area is to have it served all by crew. Now, during the pandemic, we saw all of the cruise lines move to this and then slowly move back. But Princess has taken, we think, a step in a great direction by allowing the crew to serve your food and eliminating a germ factor in the buffet. This is something that we really like to see and we prefer whenever cruise lines do this. If you missed our first impressions, the main game changer reveal was that of Americana. Americana is a brand new concept that's on board Sun Princess and soon gonna be on many different Princess cruise ships as well. This whole thought process is having a third dining venue in the main dining room space that is a place where you can go and eat casually. You can be in shorts, you can be in a t-shirt, you can be in a hat. If you don't wanna dress up on formal nights, you can go ahead and come to Americana on the top deck of the main dining room. So that would be the third deck, deck eight, of the Sun Princess to eat casually, whether that's breakfast, lunch, or dinner at any time that they are serving food. Let's talk a little bit about the specialty dining. And we tried a lot of specialty dining <laughs> over the course of five nights. We want to highlight some of the new specialty dining for the Princess Cruises fleet. And one of those is Butcher Block by Dario. 
This experience starts by walking into the space and being greeted with your Italian family. This is an Italian steakhouse. So they start by bringing you bread and wine. They show you to your seat. And then let me just say this, this experience is for the carnivores because what comes next is course after course after course of meat. Now, similar to maybe a Brazilian steakhouse, you have endless amounts of meat to eat. So if you really like a specific cut of meat, they'll come around and serve you more and more and more at Butcher Block by Dario. Another brand new venue is Umai, Teppanyaki and Hot Pot. It's all in the name. It's teppanyaki. It's hot pot. We love it and it is delicious. Definitely not one to miss. And finally, Makoto Ocean, which was known as Kai Sushi beforehand, but is changing names. This is a traditional sushi and has really unique warm rice rolls underneath the fresh fish. And let me say, as a fresh fish eater, this was delicious. The last specialty dining or paid for experience that we do want to talk about is Spellbound. Spellbound by Magic Castle is a phenomenon and the fact that it is on Princess Cruises is incredible. If you don't know much about Magic Castle, it is the pin ultimate magic place for magicians in the world. It's in LA, but for the first time ever, it is now on a cruise ship. We got invited into the parlor. As soon as you step into the Magic Castle or the Spellbound area, it's like stepping off the ship and into a completely different world. This experience for $149 includes dinner as well as endless drinks and a show. This private venue is amazing. It's incredible and truly a spectacle when you walk through the doors. But it doesn't end just within an hour or two like, like most specialty experiences. You can actually stay in this venue the entire night. There are only 90 people that get to go into this experience every single night, three groups of 30. So it is a very intimate space with a few people going into this space, which we think is amazing and definitely something that is sought after by cruisers everywhere. The magicians throughout the space and the magic show itself were mind blowing. This is going to be an experience that I am sure will sell out over and over and over again. So if you're interested in Spellbound, you need to book it early as soon as you book your cruise and plan on having one of the most mysterious <laughs> and magical evenings on board the ship. Oh, and we almost forgot. The specialty cocktail list, I think there's 12 of them, are some of the best drinks across the ship. Those drinks were so good, but that was one of what it seemed like endless cocktail lists at the bars across the ship. There's been 200 new cocktails crafted for the Sun Princess. And we just have to say, it was possibly the best craft cocktail experience we have ever had in our 75 cruises. This is no joke. We have done a lot of cruises and this is our favorite cruise ship for craft cocktails ever. And that is safe to say. There's no even close second. This wasn't a hard thing to say. If you are someone who loves craft cocktails, the Sun Princess is the place for you. Two of our favorite venues were O'Malley's as well as Good Spirits. And in Good Spirits, there are free and educational cocktail shows. Now, of course, you do have to pay for your drink or have that drink included in one of your packages, but the bartenders will take your drink, give you information about where that drink is from, and show you and teach you how to make it. This venue filled out every single night, but there was four, three to four shows each night where they were making cocktails, teaching people about the cocktails that you were drinking. We thought this concept was so cool for a cruise ship. We've never seen this happen on any other cruise ship for free. That was the food and drink side. Let's talk about the good when it comes to activities and entertainment. We love the fact that we can say the activities were numerous on Sun Princess. This isn't something that is always easy to say for other cruise lines in the premium space. We have found other cruise lines to be a little boring every once in a while with not much to do. That was not the case on Sun Princess and we're happy to report that back to you. There were endless things to do at night. There were activities in the main piazza, there was trivia, and there was a lot of different types of shows to see, like comedians, live music. If you enjoy guest performers, we saw a phenomenal Adele impersonator. There was so much to do in the evenings of this ship 
that we were always busy kind of running from one venue to the other. One of the venue spaces that are meant for the entertainment is the dome. Now, one thing we love learning about the dome, even though we weren't able to fully experience this part, was the fact that the seats are innovative in design. These are lounge chairs by day when you're soaking in the sun and just relaxing, but by night when shows are happening in the dome, they actually transform and make two or three seats. These seats then are actually gonna double the amount of seating in the dome for the shows, so there's not gonna be a lack of seats inside the dome for some of their headlining acts at night. One last thing that we have to mention in the good section is the service. The quality of service for the Sun Princess was very, very high. We know that when a ship first launches, especially first in class ship, service can lack. And we can honestly say, I don't think we experienced one issue the entire time that we were on board. The crew were friendly. They were happy to be there. Food service was fast. Drink service was quick. We actually were very impressed with the overall service that we got throughout our stay on the ship. The service was unmatched and one that you can look forward to on Sun Princess. And we love to say that because that is something that really makes every cruise that much more special. Next, let's move into the bad. And we always like to preface this. When we talk about the bad, these are more so things that we feel like you need to know or are good to know before ever stepping on board this ship. And at the end, we're gonna tell you our ugly. So stay tuned until the end because there's one thing that we really wish did not happen on Sun Princess. After a full five days, we were able to find a new thing in the stateroom that was not one of our favorites. That is motion censored side table lights. These are towards the bottom of the side tables and every single time there was any motion besides your side table, well, the light turned on. It just shot out light from the bottom of the side table and that could be caused by anything, whether it's your sheets moving when you're tumbling in bed, or it could be a cord, like a charge cable. Yeah, for me, I use a CPAP machine, so I have kind of a long tube coming from my face during the night, and we particularly noticed that my CPAP cord would flicker on the light constantly throughout the night. So it was something that is a very innovative idea, but for right now, we don't see that it works very well. That wasn't the only part of the room that was light or bright. The curtains also did not make the room light tight. We know for a lot of people, something that you love is getting in that stateroom and it being pitch black for a perfect night's sleep. Thankfully, the bed was really comfortable, so we slept well, but there was definitely light peeking in kind of all around the curtain every single morning when the sun rose. Another thing on our bad list is overall across the ship, the color scheme felt very beige. For a brand new ship, we expect there to be some more unique colors or colors that really invite you in. And this is more of just a traditional cruise ship color and not one that was that exciting or brand new. Something that's not a big deal, but something that we definitely noticed. In terms of the layout of the ship, Deck 9 is a little bit different. And something that you need to know is that if you are staying in a cabin on Deck 9, Deck 9 is one of the main levels with a lot of venues. It's where people will be walking through. And we noticed those corridors and those hallways were quite busy. I can't speak to how the noise level was in those rooms, but people might be coming out of the buffet or out of the piazza and headed to the other side of the elevators, walking through your hallway and next to your door. Every time we walked down those hallways, we passed multiple sets of people. So it is an area that's more high traffic. And if you're staying in that area, just something that you do need to know. One of the new venues on Sun Princess that we've never seen before is the arena. This is a brand new concept for Sun Princess where you can have multiple different types of performances, whether that be in more of a thrust stage where there's three sides of seating or even in the round where there are seats all the way around the stage. We love the overall idea of this concept, but when it comes to seating, well, it's not our favorite. One thing that we noticed right away is there's no drink holders in the actual seats, nor bar in the arena itself. Now, again, that's not a huge deal, 
But if you do bring a drink in, you just need to know that you are probably gonna be holding it in your hand throughout the duration of the performance. We also noticed that the seats themselves are a little tighter. So if you're someone that is a fluffier cruiser, you do have some benches, but they are few and far between. I think I counted over 60 of those bench spaces across the arena that holds up to 900 guests. So get there early if you want a little more extra space and get one of those bench seats. The seats in the arena also go all the way back to the wall. This means when people come into the arena, there is no place to stand and watch the show. The unfortunate part, we decided one night to sit all the way up in the back, was that people kind of came and stood in the aisles and even stood in the walkways that kind of separate the stadium seating, blocking our view. For the first 15 minutes of our 45 minute show, there was people just standing there not realizing that they were kind of blocking us because it's so non-traditional. So I think people will have to really get used to this space. And if you are going, please remember that if you're just standing in the aisles, more than likely you're blocking someone's view from being able to see the stage. The next thing that was a concern for us and a uh, bad was the tight buffet spaces during high peak times of lunch. If you're going to the eatery, the main buffet, try to go a little bit different times than what you would imagine being the peak time for lunch because those venues do get packed and get highly congested while people are waiting for the service of the crew behind the buffet counters. There were plenty of times when we did not notice this area congested, but lunch specifically filled up very fast with kind of long lines waiting for the food to be served to you. So just something to know, maybe go at one o'clock, 1.30, have a later lunch or a brunch earlier in the day to avoid the massive crowding in the eatery area. This next one we mentioned in our first impressions as what we hoped it wasn't gonna be. And we do have to mention it again here because it ended up being somewhat true. There are certain venues and they actually are some of the newer venues like Makoto Ocean that have a little too casual of venue space. When you're sitting in Makoto Ocean, you are right next to the Piazza walkway and there's really not much separating you between that venue and the walkway. It just doesn't give you that special feeling of a $45 meal on board the ship and something that we wish they would change in the future for future class ships. There was one dining experience that for us was actually very bad. <laughs> Thankfully, this is not a dining experience that you need to have on the Sun Princess. This was the room service. We ordered the room service a couple of times just to try it out. And one time we did have a grilled cheese show up to our room where... Well, the cheese just wasn't melted at all. It was just some American slices on bread. So the room service did not really pass the food test in our opinion. Thankfully, there was so much else on the ship to eat that was delicious, but room service might be one to bypass for the future. When it comes to the entertainment activity side of our review, on the bad side is something that we didn't get to fully experience. Since they didn't have the dome fully ready for nightlife, we never got to experience it as somewhat of a club or South Beach atmosphere like they have promoted. That being said, there is no other club space on the ship. We really felt like most of the time on cruise ships, there is a unique venue that transforms maybe by day to night into more of a club atmosphere for those that want to dance the night away. We are yet to see, we have yet to see what the dome has in store. So maybe this is going to be completely solved once they have stuff in the dome. But for now, that was something that was unfortunately a little lacking on Sun Princess. One other venue that actually did not really impact us at all, but we know it might impact some of you, is that there is no art gallery on board currently. We know that can always change, but typically, especially for you Park West folks that collect art, there is no venue, there is no place to purchase art more formally like that. We are going to see the Love by Brito restaurant open, which that's all about art. So that'll be interesting to kind of see what comes into that venue, but no Park West here on the Sun Princess, at least in early 2024. Now it's time for our ugly. And this is something that really bummed us out for this cruise. But the good news is it probably won't bum you out for your cruise. 
That's because our ugly is that there were no production shows or Park 19 available on our cruise. Yeah, all the production shows were not quite ready yet. And Park 19, which is the new area that sets up on Deck 19, was also not open. We know that sometimes this happens with cruise ships. This is one of the first times where just none of it was open for our cruise. So that was very disappointing to us because we love production shows. And I have high hopes for what is to come for Sun Princess. Like Jared said, the good news is this was an ugly for us that will not be an ugly for you at home. So who is the Sun Princess for? Well, overall, what we have to say about the Sun Princess is we were pleasantly surprised with our stay on the Sun Princess being way more multi-generational, way more focused on casual fun and less of, well, a hoity-toity experience. What we mean by that is that we had a blast and we never felt like we had to dress up late night for dinner or we never felt like we had to live up to a certain class standard to be on board some princess. There were people with families on board of all ages that were getting away from their day jobs, whether that's corporate America or something even more stressful, and they could really relax at sea. We love this and think this is incredible and something that is missing out there for some premium cruise lines. As someone that grew up cruising with my family, I can really see this ship be a place where you've got grandma and grandpa, mom and dad, or dad and dad, and the kids kind of all enjoying a vacation. You've got stuff for different aged people across the board. This really is a ship that is for multi-generational families, and we're really, really excited to see all of you experience the ship and let us know your thoughts. On top of that, it's definitely meant for friends and group gatherings. We can't wait to bring our friends on board Sun Princess and have a full on cocktail experience. <laughs> Some of our highest praise for Sun Princess goes into the cocktails on board. And we know that our friend group and those that we love to celebrate with will have a blast on Sun Princess. If you're interested in Sun Princess, don't forget that we are travel agents. You can head over to jjcruise.com, fill out that form, and we would be happy to help you plan your Sun Princess cruise. This was a great experience for both of us, and I think the last question we need to answer is, would we go on Sun Princess again? I think I gave that away, absolutely. Sun Princess is a brand new cruise ship class, a brand new cruise ship, and we love the fact that it is available and is gonna have more ships coming out in the future. So we cannot wait to go back on Sun Princess, but let us know your thoughts. Let us know in the comments below, would you book the Sun Princess? What are your good and bad first impressions as well as what do you love from our review? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. On your way out, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. Again, I'm Jordan. And I'm Jared. Until next time, see ya. Jay